Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Whiskey Untitled. Today, our topic, what is our topic? Our topic the good is a love and hate about what we love and hate about whiskey. Is basically our topic. Today. Oh, this one's easy. Yep, yep. I know, already know yours. All right, and... Do you? Yes, I do. And who are you? <laughs> I'm Snip of Scotch and Snip. And who are you? And I am Drinking Caveman, a.k.a. The Caveman. And, uh, yeah, so... As you know, our topic already, let's go into what's in your glass, Wally. What's in your glass, man? This stuff, this right here. This is Wardhead 19. So this is the, uh, it's kind of weird because nobody's going to know what Wardhead 19 is. I have is. no clue, dude. I'm like, huh? Okay. So there's this magic they do called teaspooning. Master of Malt actually released it. This is a single barrel glint fitting, okay. which they do not do. But to get around it being a single barrel, this is technically a blend because they take a teaspoon from another distillery. Like that. it. And they put it in there. And so now we have a lot of blend. But technically, it's a single barrel with it. And it's pretty good and tasty. Huh. Okay. So basically, just adding a little bit of Balvini, like you said, and they basically can't call it Balvini anymore or a Glenfiddich, right? So. Because Glenfiddich doesn't sell single barrels anymore. It's just not a thing they do. So to avoid people being able to stay in a single barrel, you know, they do this. Huh. In terms of flavor, it's, it's amazing. It's like like biscuits, like legit like English biscuits. It's so good. Huh. Awesome. But, and is that like a practice that most distilleries do, or is it just uh, like a once in a while kind of thing? Or you No, know, it's what a lot of independent bottlers do to get around the idea of not getting a barrel from the distillery. So they've done it with Bob Benny, they've done it with McCallum and a few other brands that they can't stay. they got a single barrel from, but they got a single Huh, interesting. Uh, that that would be a lot of fun, but um like I I know like teaspooning with um was it uh Irish whiskey and then some peat whiskey. I know it's people that's then been, been doing that kind of thing and they call it teaspooning, I guess you call it as well. Where they grab an Irish whiskey and they add a bit of peated whiskey into it and it actually changes the way and actually people like it a lot. So it's it becomes like a mellow that's peat. Weird. Wait, people are adding peat on purpose? Yes, yeah, on purpose. And it, just... hey, I, a little bit of peat's always good for me, but once you get into the deep end, that's kind of where I kind of draw the line. But yeah. yeah, I've been I've been seeing people do it all the time. A throwing ten. Yeah, no, I I I am with you with the peat kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, what I'm drinking is the Bullet Bourbon Barrel Strength Whiskey. I know we talked about this off air that um, it was a Kentucky in I think Kentucky only in 2016. And then now it's a couple of states right now, so I'm lucky enough that I'm in a state that has it. Um, I actually haven't tried it yet. I'm about to take a swig right now. But um, I've heard nothing but great things. Um, I'm a big fan of Barrow Strength. smell. What do you expect? Um, vanilla? Caramel? Bourbon. But yeah, no, a basic bourbon notes and a bit of hint of... Um, you can you can definitely get the alcohol in it. I'm getting that darker vanilla that I usually get in like Villain Bean. But no, it, it smells good. Viscosity is good on it, too. It looks very thick if you can see that. Viscous. Yeah. I judge it by how it feels on the tongue. And then um, just if no one knows my glass. glass. Yeah, my glass is the um, okay, official bourbon trail glass. Um, I've noticed that it actually helps a lot more with um, barrel strength type bourbons. So that's kind of when I, when I find a barrel strength or pick a barrel strength bourbon, I kind of go to this glass. So. And Shimon, how you doing, man? I see you in the chat. Hope you're doing well. About to take a swig on it. I do see him. Hola, senor. Mm. But yeah, no. Ooh. How's it taste? It, it reminds me of something. I just can't. It's on the tip of my tongue, too. But no, it's good. I just... <laughs> flavors, flavors. Give me flavors. I know, right? Um, hmm. Yeah, I just have. I de is it fruity at all? No. Is it floral? It's not at that all? floral, fruity. It's definitely deep caramel. I can get a bit of a char, but nothing too big. So sweet oak. You get the sweet. You definitely get the brown sugar type sweet. Okay. Um, that thick. I wouldn't say coffee, but you definitely get like maybe a dark chocolate, maybe. Like espresso. Yeah, you can get that kind of. It's definitely deep, like dark deep. Any dryness? No, not yet. Well, now at the end it kind of is, but nothing. Slightly yeah. tannic. It reminds me of bourbon, though. It, it reminds me very similar to the barrel bourbon, without the nutty. Hmm. So, hmm. the number eleven, anyway. 
<laughs> the Nutella yeah. magic. I don't get too much Nutella, but I, it definitely tastes very similar. Hmm. That's interesting. Yep. Yeah. All right, so um, side by side. since we've talked to what's in our glass, um, do you have any buys this week? Uh, I know we were out, out oh, yeah. last week, so kind of adding them all together. What's uh, What have you yes. received, bought? Bought. Lots of bought. Uh, Joseph Magnus. This stuff was supposed to be, I don't know, it was all over the Instagram blogosphere. And they made it sound like it was something good, but this tastes like MGP garbage, which actually is part of the reason that... I wanted to talk about like the things. Man, like, really, dude? Mm-hmm. Like, see this bottle here, man. The cigar blend is different. This one is a uh, PX Cast Old. Yeah, that's their Cast standard blend, blend, man. But like, yeah, but hey, this tastes like MGP garbage. It, it's a it's batch too, so you know different batches, right? So you maybe you just got a bad one or. But I definitely have to give you a sample of this stuff. So I'm not buying another one for a hundred dollars. It that's is ridiculous. it is pricing, especially when it's down your area, right? So. Especially if it's so terrible. Yeah, so what what else what else did you get? Uh, I picked up the Jim Beam Signature Craft Soft Red Wheat 11 Year. Okay. It's just something weird I found, and I thought it would be interesting because it's an 11 year wheat. You know, and that isn't. And that's a 350 bottle, is it? Or is that a. 375. Yeah. It tastes okay in price for 375. It tastes okay, but it has some weird after taste but that's not abnormal for jim beam so i'm really not surprised okay so those are the two main bottles i picked up and then uh this weekend a friend of mine gave me some sack spirit simple syrup blackberry flavor Ooh, blackberry flavor. that's the rest of the for stuff to make like a what's it supposed to make sack more spirit black eye drop which i'll try it soon just need to buy some mint hmm. gotcha gotcha huh well i guess it's time for my lineup so um it was a big, big week for me. Um, I, so I went on a trip, um, and I know, um, Sniff, I've been hitting you up, dude. So I finally picked up a bottle that I kind of put as my, like, um, achievement bottle, I guess you call it. So Ben Nevis, I'm hoping I'm saying this right, man, right? Ben Nevis. Ben Nevis. Nevis. 20-year-old. Um, it's, a, it's a sherry finished, or not finished, it's sherry aged whiskey. So I'm very excited for that. And I heard that they're... Um, they are a distillery owned by Nika, a Japanese company. So I was that's like, ooh, right. that's kind of, you know, pretty cool. Maybe they use their barrels for their stuff. So <laughs> I don't know about I all that. I don't know. I'm just guessing, right? And then um, – That's funny that they're owned by – you said they're owned by yeah. Nika? Nika Whiskey, yeah. Nika Distillery in Japan. I wonder if it's Nika because is Nika owned by Suntory also? No, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. But, hey, we'll be corrected soon enough, sooner enough, right? I'm yep, sure. and then um, for a weird pick, I got some rum. So I got the Florida Cana. I know I've been messaging you, hey, dude, which rum yes. to get? Which rum to get? And then All I'm like, rums. I don't know which one. So I picked up that is one. It 25, <clears throat> is that 25 uh, vatted or is it a 25 year? It says actual age? 25 years slow aged. So, okay. So it's not a Solera vat? I guess not. But then again, I, it's interesting for rum. It's dark as hell too, but then again, rums are usually dark because of sugar and stuff. And then um, I am very, very lucky to be able to get this Jefferson's Reserve Cast Strength, which is up my alley. If you, as you guys know, Voyage Number Ten, which is the winner of the New Orleans um, Bourbon Festival. So this beat out a quite a quite a number of uh, bourbons for the first year of um, the New Orleans Bourbon Festival. So I'm very excited to find this. When that thing won, they sold out everywhere. So I'm very happy to get that. Hmm. And then on a promotional side, um, I reached out to a distillery called Heritage Distilling. They're up in Washington State, so very close to me. I have their Elk Rider bourbon whiskey. Um, I'll tell you a bit of a story about their Elk Rider stuff. I got their Elk Rider rye whiskey, which I have not tried yet. But um, the bourbon's actually pretty good. Um, I'll probably give it like a three and a half. You probably see it on my Instagram sooner or later. Um, it's very mellow, and it gives me more of a whiskey flavor, like a scotch flavor than a bourbon flavor, which is kind of weird. Get a lot of like green apple-y type, sweeter hmm. green fruits. And then um, the one that I was actually looking forward to is the BSB 103. Um, brown sugar bourbon, um, 103 proof. 
my friends at work were raving about this and like, dude, we know you like uh, whiskeys. You gotta, you gotta get this. And I'm like, all right, we'll see what I can do. And I was looking at brown sugar. Do they add brown sugar? I today? don't know. So I'm actually like, I'm in the dark when it comes to that bottle. Um, I need to do a bit more research and then I'll give you guys an honest email. That's true. I think they gave me a pamphlet here, but it didn't have like a bunch of stuff about their whiskey, sadly. And then last but not least, the Hillhaven Lodge got a little sample of their stuff. Um, and actually won a, uh, San Francisco spirits award. Don't remember for what for, but it's definitely for the flavor, not the marketing one. And um, done, uh, owned by a guy that uh, used to produce movies at Hollywood. Um, was that Hill Haven was his ranch? That's what he called it when he had used to parties and stuff like that. So I'm like, interesting story behind it. Good marketing. So I'll see how that goes as well. And then we'll see, the last part, I know it's taking a while, but um, got some self promo awesome, right? So got some caveman coasters from coaster connoisseurs over on instagram um uh, i was lucky enough to um talk with them and uh look how cool that is dude right a giant coaster i know right like for a giant glen karen glass dude oh oh what an idea fill that up oh that'd be awesome so there you yeah, have really them. man okay i gotta think about that yeah. um so this is i'm putting my, my shots on this so like what you are mr fancy fancy photographer Something like that, you know? So I'm very happy about uh, how it turned out, you know, etching my logo. That I know a bit about woodworking, and that is not an easy task. So, And then um, just a tidbit for you guys. I actually will be um, giving one of these away. So there was only five of these made giving one away. So, Did they CNC those? That's what I've heard. They CNC'd these, this part, but this is so tiny, dude. So I don't know how they have... Yeah, but if it's CNC, it's a little less impressive. No, that's true. Because it's not like somebody's doing it by hand. They just no, I, type it in the machine. Yeah, and, they're good and I know this pieces. This was like the fourth or fifth iteration because my logo is a pain in the butt, they said. So, see how it is. All right, man. So, uh, to the topic, sir. And I'll let you go first. Oh, yes. Here's a topic. And remind everybody <laughs> what it is. Things you love and hate about this oh, thing. All right. But good one. <clears throat> mine's quick and easy. It's just hate because... This, it's the Joseph Magnus. Yep. <clears throat> this bottle reminded me. When I looked at it and it said distilled in Indiana, mm -hmm. MGP, yep. uh, aged in Kentucky, finished and bottled by Joseph A. Magnus Co. in D.C., which I found on Florida Avenue. I do, I, I don't know, something inside it was like, this is a bad idea. And it turned out it was a horrible idea. I'm not even surprised by that. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, <laughs> I don't know. It tastes horrible. It tastes ridiculously vegetable. It tastes like LPI. It tastes, I don't know if he picks these barrels, because I've had better barrels from Indiana, but I was ever supposed to be whatever they're really being finished in, so it's not conveying. Yeah, and they're supposed to have some of the best mines in bourbon, too, which is why I'm surprised that you said that, but um, I know you're not a big bourbon fan, so I can kind of put a little asterisk around that, but what about your... the Not even that. I mean, I've bought a lot yeah. of bourbon. Stuff that comes from Heaven Hill, no problem. Buffalo Chase, no problem. And, I mean, they have giant lines, you know, for all yeah. that stuff. Even like, bookers and whole no line of, like, everything they carry. Right now. But just, I don't know. Stuff so coming out of LGI lately, I just can't get behind. Sack, I know, is uh, Baltimore local, which is where the stem syrup comes from. But their stuff is coming from MGP and LGI right now. And it's, it's the same thing. I, I just don't get it. I really don't. I don't understand why people are pushing me Because, um. What is it, old scale? Yep. When they start, all their things come from the same place. And somehow their barrels were amazing. So I don't know who they had to talk hmm. to, how they're doing picking differently, but it, their taste is so much better. But after buying this, I've been probably wasting $100. I don't, I don't know. And he's coming out there, I'm done for at least a little while, at least a year. I'm sure. Yeah, I know, because like a lot of other distillery, uh, distilling companies use MGP. You got Bullet that use it, you got Barrel Bourbon that use it. Um... I know there's a few others. Yeah, but barrel, you even told me with barrel, it's all over the place. Like, if you don't get certain bags. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes like, they're in Kentucky as well and stuff. But there's, there's a bunch yeah, of people that use it. Happens. So you're right. Hmm. I don't know. What about other. Um, I know you had a gathering a couple of days ago. Did you open that with them as well and let them try it out? or? Uh, yeah, we did. So no one liked it. Huh. Okay. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. 
how to survive. And actually, I bought a Spider Jane a few years ago, and he broke it out. That's also MGP, and it tasted almost the same. It was really bad. It was really, I mean, that was a surprise. But at the same time, I was like, not surprised. Yeah, hmm. So, Maybe I'll I'll ask for a sample from you, see how it is and stuff like that. Maybe everybody enjoyed Glenvidic Thirty. Who would have? Uh, right? Probably. I, that was my number one, but everybody else, Snow Phoenix was number one for them, pretty much. So, so out of the, fifteen, or sixteen people, most people want Snow Phoenix. And the funny thing is, like, I saw that bottle on the shelf, like for three or four months, like, and I'm just like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It goes for like. 100 to 1400 now. I should have grabbed it. Dude, and they were like cheap too. They're like a probably like 100 or sub 100. You want to hear something crazy? Wow. I didn't have to open mine. Oh, um, was it Tiff? Right? Tracy. Tracy. Yeah, so so she yep. brought one. Invited Tracy to the uh, birthday chin day and she just brought a bottle. She's like, here, so you don't have to open yours. Just open this oh. one. Oh, see, that's, that's why you have to be friends with your um, local reps, guys. <laughs> local brand. Yeah. Members. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude, and then like, See, the thing with me is, like, I love Glenfiddich products. I get them around, so they're not that hard. But, like, the travel exclusive or the Explorer series, I was seeing that on the yeah. shelves all the time. And I'm like, oh, I can get it some other time. And then I just forget about it. And then now I really want one. Snow Phoenix is probably the other one. There was – they had a revamp of a bottle. 1963. Yeah, that, I'm like, I saw that everywhere. I'm like oh. – I grabbed two of them. I don't know. Something – I don't know. I just – I, I know you love them, and, I, and I'm a big fan of Belvinia, so anything Belvinia I'll see, or except the 25 that I saw, I'd probably pick it up. So. Oh, next year, I was thinking that should be the bottle that I buy for a birthday bottle. This is the 30. 30 year? Yeah. Man. Oh, anyway, we're talking about things we hate about whiskey. It's not what we love <laughs> about it. And right? love. Um, anything else besides that one? Anything? Um, like, I know Pete was going to be a big one for you. Um but I think everyone knows that. Uh, yeah, well, you know, Pete is this and that. So it depends, again, on its application. It depends on how the piece is delivered. If it's delivered in a balanced way, it's hard not to like it. If it's delivered like Lefroy, where it punches you in the teeth, it kicks you in the nuts, then it's not, it's not fun. Hmm. Yeah, so when I'm thinking about just whiskeys in general, stuff that I guess that puts me off is when I, when I taste a whiskey that I usually am pretty confident in gets over oaked now um i know some people love the wood but i've had some eagle wear that by god it tastes like i'm eating wood um and i just can't get over that taste like um you get the you know the regular bourbon Are taste. Those store picks yeah some store picks okay because the regular eagle rare is awesome the, for 30 bucks, yeah so the normal it. eagle rare you get a little bit of that wood in there and that's kind of the purpose right so you can taste a bit of the oakiness in there but I have one where it's like they either left it in for 12 years or something or this had a really bad barrel because, oh, my God, it's it's eating like water and wood. It, it's hmm. it's insane. And, and that's one big thing that puts me off. Like I love my oak in my whiskeys, but once it just becomes like a sugar water and oak, it just puts me off. And then the whole night just kind of spirals down like and you know that I do my own barrels, so I get that wood flavor a lot. But I've never made it to to a fact to a point where it's over oaky. That but then when I have this, I've it, never it, actually. I don't think I've ever had. I'm trying to think of bourbons that I've had. I've had a lot, but I'm trying to think of bourbons that I've had that tasted just like straight yeah. oak. I don't. I don't. Yeah, know. I, Most I, I probably have to give you a sample of that one. Yeah. yeah, I've had some bad store picks, but just because it tastes like crap. And, and that's what's weird. Like I, 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 so I know the store owner. I went to him. I was like, "Hey, dude, yeah, see." And I went to the store and I was like, hey, dude, like, have you, do you guys tried? And he's like, oh, no, for our, I guess, in Oregon, they don't allow you to taste the barrels before they do the store pick. Oh, they do the ABC in Oregon? Yeah, so it's just it's it's, it's just weird. Um, I'm like... But it's not any better at regular stores, though. Some stores, like the owner picks, some stores... And at least I can go the to the owner, owner and... In the store yeah, at least picks. I can go to the owner and be like, dude, that tastes like crap, you know? Yeah. But, like, this one's like, yeah, I don't it's even know. Something. And he was like, I'll give you a refund, man, if you don't like it. I'm like... Oh wow! No, I'm cool with it now. I know and I can, you know, if, if, like let's for instance, you said that, hey, I want to try something really oaky. I'm like, hey, I got something just for you. Here's if you want to p- pick oak out of a bourbon. Here you go, and that's kind of what I've been using it for. Is like, hey, you know, I want to know what something over oaked or under oaked, or I want something that's very strong on vanilla notes and stuff. So I have those whiskeys lined up. So if someone's interested in that, I'm like, hey, here you go. 
So, but yeah, besides, and then Wait, that's that's the only thing you hate about whiskey. Well, I got the oak part. I, everyone knows the peat's not really my thing right now. And then if we and, right now, and yeah, well, I'm I'm trying. I really am. I really want to get into that part of the the spectrum. And then the other part, and this is more on um, just the bottles in general, is pricing. Uh, I'm I'm guessing I'm guessing everyone can agree with this that I feel that some bottles like like the Magnus for instance right it's MGP it's it's standard release it's nothing like they've gone years and years of different yeast strains or anything like that and they charge you over, what a hundred dollars it's not it's, worth it it's it's ridiculous and it's a forty dollar and bottle. what I'm thinking about this way is you got to think about the Scotch companies that are importing stuff in there they have to pay import tax and I can still get a bottle for sixty seventy dollars. Why, yeah. why is a bourbon, when I'm living in the United States, that expensive? Unless it's... Yeah, they're paying 90% to 87%, 89% tax yeah. on everything in Scotland. That's how they pay for alcohol. And, and, and that's they're crazy. And that's price. what I'm, I'm, th- I'm thinking right now is like, hey, one-off releases, you know, the 50-year, 30-year. The years I understand because eventually, you know, you're sitting on this, or a company's sitting on this for that long. They need to, you know, reap the benefits, right? It makes sense, right? Yep. But like when you got the non-age statement stuff that, you know, it's special release, but you don't know why it's a special release, i.e. like yeah. bullet, right? Why was it only in Kentucky? Like were they limited to it or they just want to try it out? I don't know. It could be a tryout thing. I, I don't know. But it's, you, know, you have testing panels for that. I mean, if you're a giant company, you literally just hire some people to be the testing panel and you're going to yeah. get So it doesn't make any sense. So it's just <clears throat> price for me. And I, I don't know, Shimon, I know you're in the chat still, man. I don't know about how you feel about the pricing, but like for me, dude, it's it's getting out of hand. Yeah, no, out of hand isn't even the word for it. As I said, like this, this is probably be the last time I buy something from Indiana for yeah. a while. I just I can't do it. It's been a hundred dollars on garbage. Yeah, and what, what, so you got other companies coming in, you got Japanese companies coming in, but that's secondary prices. So I'm not even talking about secondary prices. I'm just talking about MSRP, what's on the shelf right now, and I'm not even talking about the weird store owners that put Pappy Van Winkle there for five hundred, seven hundred dollars. It's just everyday releases. I'm just like, it's just um, the Booker's limited release. They changed it from six uh, six bottles to, I think, four or five now. And that's still in the 80 range and stuff like that, which I it's great juice, but 60 bucks, man. Costco has a ton for $50. Right? Yeah, th- that makes sense. But yeah. um, this Ocean's Reserves, $100. I kind of know why. Cast Strength, I it's can't. over. It's the Ocean the thingy. I, can't do it. I, I hope it's good. And they put it on our boat. And that's and I think that's a story that the marketing story it tells you, right? Like their normal stuff is yep. about seventy dollars, so hey, let's tack on thirty twenty to thirty dollars. You know? And it's going up oh, again. Yeah. Shimon, don't don't say that, dude. Yeah, it, I, I think we're at the point where like was it uh when I bought my bottle of blue label, it was still a hundred dollars. And that's look at whistle pig. Oh, their stuff? Look, all you do is look yeah. at whistle pig. Like how how can you justify oh buy our bottles five hundred dollars? Yeah, piece. was it the, the boss like, hog right? No, yeah, the boss hog one two three four seven nine two whatever. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't make any sense. Five hundred dollars. You're asking people to spend half a grand, like that's half of some people's mortgage payments or a third of some people's yeah. mortgage payments. So even a quarter. That's ridiculous. No, it, it doesn't. Make Sense. it is and what, what does it taste like that it's worth five hundred dollars? and i and i feel as though like you know i think all of us kind of add to it as well with you know some people that collect it some people resell it you know it adds to that but i just feel as though they're taking advantage of it right now i i mean there will always be people to take advantage of it but the prices will never go higher than some idiots willing to pay yeah, that means that there are people out there willing to pay five hundred dollars all day. Which is which is crazy because I like that's still an, I think it's MPG right or MGP. MGP right yeah. that's that's MPG uh, MPG. So I just I, just, I honestly don't understand. <laughs> so it has a fancy top. Yeah, I got it. But wait, no, the whistle pig is. Are they distilling their own yet? They did with that farm they stock. Were, they were, but that didn't do well. They were buying stuff from Canada. And then they adding it with something else. Originally, it was just rebottled, can like some hundred point Canadian whiskey being rebottled, winning like 95, 96 points here in America. But we do know that they're sourcing it; they're not making it, right? So that's kind of the justification, right? Like, I don't know if they're making yeah, so, it yet. And you're, I understand with some of the Four Roses stuff with all the different yeast strains and mixtures and stuff like that. Okay, I, I understand why they pay a premium on those. Um, 
I understand when something is 10, 15, 20, 25, those kind of years because it's sitting there. I understand the Oloroso Sherry or the uh, Pedro Jimenez stuff because that's the barrels are expensive. I'm not going to lie that they are. 1500 bucks right? a piece. So I understand that part. And then especially with people importing. But it just – sorry, people. It's, I know it's a rant, year, but it's uh, it's getting out of hand for me. Shimon, what year, Val Blair? A little bit of rant, but it makes sense. But no, like ex bourbon barrels go for 100 bucks. Sherry barrels go for fifteen hundred dollars. It totally makes sense that there's a giant difference yeah. there. And so I'm McCallum cost some extra, but if I can buy a solid McCallum twelve, finish in sherry casks for seventy dollars, sixty dollars, yeah. but I can't buy a regular bourbon that tastes like something that's not garbage for a hundred dollars. You gotta be kidding me. Yeah, that's kind of why I stick to certain brands when it comes to that. Like Michter's is, hasn't let me wrong yet, so I, I like their stuff. It's not that bad. Uh, and I have. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, yeah. Shimon showed a post of that uh, 90 Bob Blair. And I haven't seen it yet. But, um, no, it, it, I know this is a big rant and it's going on for a while, but it just, it just, it's killing me with the prices. And it's hurting my wallet. Like, you can see all these bottles around here. You know, whiskey's not cheap. And, you know, me being um, somebody that wants to explore things. I have no bottles. Behind me, I have no yeah, bottles. Yeah, just, just ask him about his closet, man. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, um, and that's that's basically the two things for me is like it's it's pricing and that's not just any comp uh, just one company that's every company like i'm seeing some uh micro distillers like heritage and stuff like they're selling their bottles for 30 to 50 dollars like that's the range and that's where i feel it should be like it's a decent bottle decent price it's something for everybody it's two years yeah. old so you know but um once once people decrease price, should, hmm. like it. you're making me think i should bourbon strike for a year because, I mean, I'm literally getting 12-year-old whiskeys for 50 to $60. Yep. And I can't get a 2-year-old whiskey or a 3-year-old whiskey for $100 for American bourbon. And that's so, kind of why I, I personally have been only – I've been very selective in what bourbons I buy. But scotches, I'm trying to explore more. So uh, maybe, yeah. uh, maybe next episode we can talk about some finished um, scotches or some other types of different scotches and stuff, to be honest. Because I, I think that's – that's what I want to understand, and I know you're the expert for me, so it's definitely where I want to go. Tiny jumps all right, flavor wise. Yeah, I saw. I think I posted that a couple of days ago. I saw it. Finally, saw it on the shelves over here. It's not bad. But um, yeah, that's that's my rant. That's my angry rant for the day. Um, you have anything else? Uh, any other a bottle of the day or anything like that? Did you have um? There's one bottle I'm excited for, but I'll let you go first. It seems like you got a smile on your face, so. No, I just have the the Glenfiddich 30 when I uh, cracked it open. The cork broke in half. It's the first time I've ever had a cork Ooh, break. On a 30-year-old, too. And it was a 20-minute ordeal to, like, get the cork out. Ended up pouring the entire barrel's contents through a coffee filter and, like, getting it all back in the bottle after cleaning the bottle out. But it was yeah, that kind of sounded like my weekend. Um, but, you know, um, so, yeah, tell everybody what, what your lineup was. Because I, I, when I saw the photos, I was definitely jealous. And uh, I bet our uh, listeners will be, too. I kind of have to look at the photo for the lineup. But it was the Cavalan Vino Break. Yep. It was the... Yeah, the Snow Phoenix, Phoenix. right? Snow Phoenix. Had the Glenfiddich 30, Cavalan Solis Vino Break, the Glen Farquist 1981 Autumn Cask release. The Glyphitic Snow Phoenix, the Babbler 1990, and the Hibiki 20. Oh, yeah, you had the Hib- Hibiki 21. And that's the one you sent me, so thank you yeah. again. Um, that was for a buddy of mine who like loves Hibiki. Hibiki. That's, that's cool. Yeah, I'm actually. so since you gave me the 21, I have now the 17 and the 12. So I'm actually going to do a, oh, yeah? uh, a flight of those. Where'd you, find the, where'd you find the 12 and 17? So I have bottles of the 12 up there. So I actually bought a case when they were under oh, 100. Wow. So, yeah, a buddy of mine called up the total wine in washington state and he was all like um did you guys get their shipments like yeah we got a couple cases and my friend drove there right after work picked up like th- three case. cases one for each of us and then, yeah under a hundred dollars so i was very very happy about that and even then i was like oh 90 dollars a bottle but now i'm like oh 90 dollars a bottle because i used <laughs> to buy them at 70 bucks so like I, I, I was there before it became popular, and I'm just like, shit, I like this. It's like Yamazaki. Yamazaki 12 used to be $55. That's I what know, I know, and I got like like three bottles left. I'm, 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 I'm saving those like crazy, which kind of sucks, but. Um, it's weird. 
Just tastes like bubble gum. Uh, how was the Glen Farkless? So I have had the Glen Farkless 12 year, and I didn't like it at all. Oh, this doesn't really compare. The 1981 okay. is like, uh, you know, the Family Cash release series. Yep. So there's yep. single barrels that they do over time. But it was, I liked it. It was a little, I don't know. You could tell it was a fourth use sherry cask because it had a bit of those like rubbery, like rubber pencil eraser notes, like the weird pink rubber pencil eraser. So a little bit of that type of sherry, which is a little off-putting, but it wasn't bad. A little hot for the age. Okay. Being a 34 year old release, but it was yeah. Good. This I mean, this bottle is dusty, man. I got this in like, oh, um, 13, 12, maybe. Oh, I like the rest of their lineup. I got the 12, the 15, the 17, the 21, the 25. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just a good deal. Ooh, this cork almost broke on me too. You're getting super sherry notes for and Christmas like spices. And funny you mention that because that's why I bought it. I bought it for Christmas. Christmas spices. Yeah, I bought. No, I don't, not because of prices, but like, for. I thought I was going to get a good bottle. People have been telling me about it, sherry base and stuff. I just, I never liked it, man. And if you can see, like, I, that. You can't see it. And those bottles are so yeah. dark. Um, so, fun thing for me, if you guys have been following me, uh, Drink Cave on Instagram, shameless plug. Um, I actually did a uh, fat washed bourbon um, this weekend. Yeah, I didn't know what that yeah. was. Like bacon? Fat? Yeah, so um, I cooked pancakes for my daughter. And, um, and bacon so i'm just basically hey um i want to use it I did, I did it last year um a lot of people at my work loved it so i want to try it this time again um i got some thicker like the real big fat bacon thick cut bacon yeah so yeah. um what you do is make sure that your pan is just using the bacon no oil or anything like that and then just cook the bacon normally fry it and then save that fat and then you pour that fat through a strainer so you don't get all the little bits in there and then you have basically a layer of fat. Add a bourbon or scotch. Um, bourbon works well because it gets that um, brown sugar, weeded, sweet flavors to it. Um, added, I think I added wild turkey. Yeah, I added wild turkey 101. And then shake it up a little bit and then time it 30 minutes. Um, set it upside down so all the fat rises to the top, goes through it. Shake it again. It's about an hour or two process. And then I put it in the freezer. The freezer will um, harden up the fat. Get the fat to congeal. Yep. And basically put it through a, um, was it a straining cloth or um, what are they called? A cheese yeah, cloth. Yeah, like a cheese cloth to get all the, th- the thicker parts of the fat out. And just a uh, pro tip, always invert your bottle if you're going to use it because then you get the bigger portion of it so you can just pour the liquid out. If you have a, the top part, you have to kind of poke something through it so you can get the, less, the rest of the uh, liquid out. So, um, yeah, cheesecloth, um, I used a fine mesh strainer, and then I also used a coffee filter. Um, I kind of use a kind of chill filter pro- uh, filter process where you, you're cooling up the bottle. It's less cloudy and doesn't look as gross. And then um, mm-hmm. I use that for cocktails. That really bothers yeah, somebody. I, sometimes it does. Um, the last time Only I did it, America. yeah, the last time I did it was uh, with maple bacon. <clears throat> so that was kind of an interesting thing. Sounds but good. um no I, I used it in cocktails um bourbon sailor no not the bourbon sailor uh main i think it's main bourbon girl i think it's main bourbon girl there was a few people that was hitting me up and say hey use it for this cocktail and i think i used main bourbon girls um cocktail recipe was like one third orange one third lime with uh, chili bitters to get that flavor in there then bacon bourbon and dude it was good uh, it was a bit too sour for me but um that bacon shined in there with the chili bitters. So good. But yeah, I, I, these random things I like to do, just try them out. I, I know you got that um, simple syrup, right? The cherry simple syrup that you mentioned earlier. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm excited syrup. to see what you do with that. That'd be really fun. We'll see. I mean, I'm just going to follow the recipe on it. I'm one for science. Yeah. So if you know somebody came up with a recipe that's solid and been tried, I'll just follow the directions and do it. Yeah, dude, and reach out to Instagram. Man. There's so many people there that like – I've been following a lot more cocktail people than usual on my Instagram now. Dude, it just blows my mind all these fancy things they do. So it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. A little ice ball with the smoke inside. Yep. They crack it open. What was it? Um, I think it was a Whiskey Library DC, right? They did that whole burning smoke thing. And just... Yep. All right. Yeah, you know, they're jumping up the game, man. Like back in the day, it was like shaking it was like the big thing. So. <laughs> all right. That's it for me, man. You got anything else? Anything you want to promote, plug, or anything good? Same. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for tuning in. And, uh, you know, subscribe, follow, 
and see us on Instagram. I'm Drink Caveman, and he is Sniff from Scotch and Sniff. This way, this way. Follow me on the Instagram. There you go, guys. All right, thank you again, and take care.